Hi guys, I'm down here. Been this been uh, planned for a while, but I finally today got around to it to compare the often compared uh, Le Mal by Jean Paul Gaultier with Prada Luna Rosa line. This is Prada Luna Rosa Sport, which is said to be similar to uh, JPG Le Mal, uh, just as the other Luna Rosas are uh, said to be uh, inspired by other. Uh, famous original works um i don't think it's essentially wrong even if they were inspired as long as they try to put in their own stamp put in their own polish to what others have done but uh, 100% outright copy i guess that would be like meaningless you know especially for a house like prada okay so that's that's my view point on that uh, now coming to the perfumes themselves uh, the this uh, le mal is like a, you know a big daddy because the amount of flankers this unleashed you know it's just innumerable you can just go and look at all the uh, websites and see the sheer number of uh, uh, flankers that has come down from this uh, le mal by jp jean paul gaultier uh, i got some history with this because my dad used to sort of uh, have this and uh, Uh, on the occasion that i sometimes just you know uh, it was not my perfume but sometimes when i went out i would just sort of like you know let's try this like that and i didn't um, vibe so much with it uh, it felt kind of medicinal to me not in a bad way but just a kind of medicinal feel um the dry down is kind of more mainstream though but the opening was like that uh, but um, um i guess after over time you know with, with some amount of hype as well i decided to get one for myself Uh, and so uh, it is what it is. Probably not like a favorite perfume of mine or what. Um, uh, but not to say I hate the whole Lemal line because when I eventually got uh, uh, Ultra Male and Lemal perfume, uh, I really really loved them. And in fact, I think I told you guys the story whereby I uh, tested both on, and when I drove back, I was smelling my left and right wrist alternately. and i got confused which is which and i ended up buying <laughs> this uh, le mal uh, when i should have actually bought this this was the better smelling one but i later got this and this one i just love this this uh, le mal perfume right that's the that's the i think uh, le mal perfume and it's got like a quite a gourmandy and a uh, very pleasant uh, uh, smell uh, so i uh, i like it among all the flankers i think this is the best together ultra mal also i like but uh, For some reason, I decided not to open Ultra Mal because at that time they were talking rumors about Ultra Mal being discontinued, and I was wanted to sort of uh, keep it in like you know its original state, sort of as my own uh, what's the word for it? Nostalgia, I guess you know something like that. Okay, so that's my story with Ultra Mal. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some people might might be thinking why is he uh, talking about all these things, but uh, some people uh, like to have some stories behind uh, discussions, you know, rather than a strict robotic. Perfume A contains one, two, three, four, five. Perfume B contains uh, X, Y, Z. Therefore, analytically speaking, blah blah blah, just like a robotic. Maybe AI reviewers can fulfill uh, those people's hungers, right? But this is a more of a human uh, talk here. Okay, so that um, 2015 by um, was was it was it Kirkjan? Was it Francis Kirkjan? I'm trying to uh, recollect the. Uh, the nose behind this um uh, let me think um uh well at least at least luna rosa we know it's uh, daniela andrea she's like the main person here for prada um anyway uh, let me just um, start with the ingredients then okay so the ingredients top note for le mal is uh, uh lavender mint cardamom bergamot artemisia mid of uh, cinnamon orange blossom caraway and a base of uh, lots of stuff sandalwood amber tonka bean cedar vanilla you know those days 90s and all that the trend was to have lots of ingredients uh, i don't know it's good or bad but uh, most of them did smell good so if more number of perfumers work on a perfume and more ingredients are used generally my so called uh, saint hounds law is that it's supposed to be good this is another example of a perfume that might smell kind of straightforward but it's got lots of ingredients inside if you <laughs> it's a long list to read okay and it's one of the best sellers so yep well um the nose for lemal um, 95 east francisco gen okay that's right 
he's got his own line called Masson Francisco Jam which is kind of expensive and uh, one of these days guys one of these days guys uh, I will uh, get it I think uh, let's see how things uh, come together so I talked a bit about the trend of the uh, 90s with multiple uh, ingredients and the rise of synthetic molecules like uh, cologne I think that's the thing that's the term cologne I think uh, which gave the watermelon feel uh, to the aqua di gio back in the day and so it, this is along with the trend of those days and um, as I said uh, the medicinal vibe and then it sort of slowly comes down and then you start getting the smell of uh, uh what uh, wood is that sandalwood sandalwood cedar and then you got a bit more calming effect but in the beginning and the middle you got all this medley of um spices and and, and all that hitting your nose so some might interpret it as medicinal and some might interpret it as freshness uh the reason is i think the mint and cardamom sort of uh give that that vibe so if i were to compare this uh luna rosa with uh uh jp lamal this one uh, if you want to be kind of negative but you can say it's more blunt right there's a lack of uh, what do you call it volatility in the medley of uh, notes that hits your nose uh and if you want to be critical about lamal you can say that again the same thing too much of volatility and it sort of uh, stings your nose or too pungent to the nose so it depends on who you are actually if you want something more smooth more refined and uh, blending in better then this would be better choice okay and this um 2015 uh, lunarosa spot uh, has a topping of ginger and juniper berry mid of lavender and a base of tonka bean and vanilla so see the number of ingredients there's about only about what five ingredients there right it follows the trend of the uh, now uh, 2000 late 2000s 2000 this was 2015 so where the trend has become uh, less ingredients of course what they say and what they put in is just a totally different story okay just like car manufacturers you got those things going on for legal purposes and for whatever reasons they might state something but the blend might have some differences in it okay and then now for the um, perfume nazis or perfume fundamentalists I know that they will go on and on about batch codes and how the very first Lamal had a certain smell and then how the manufacturer they got throw in a lot of acronyms BPI and you know, what is that Puig and you know all kind of uh, combination and ingredients and what not and then the batch code and all that so if you are uh, into that kind of stuff you know if you are into that uh, obsessive compulsive um a uh, version of the you know what karen you're a karen you know you're a perfume karen okay just joking guys you know so maybe i'm not going to go into do that that thing man i uh, you they i think there are some people who sort of review that style you if you are into that you can go there i guess <laughs> i um, yeah right so i'm not going to go into that way of enjoying my perfumes because see at the, at the very base perfumes are all about to me at least it's all about your right brain it's just like enjoying a good painting okay you just want to take the whole thing in and talk about how it overall the aesthetics of it uh, if you are going to end up breaking into what are the pigment pigments used what is the size of the um uh, the what's the word for it um what do they call that that the canvas canvas right the canvas material and so on uh, the wood grain in the frame then you're going to be all technical about it man you know come on so um, unless you are a technician whose job is to sort of uh, work and make the frames for the painting then i guess it makes sense aesthetics of the bottle uh, looks wise of course lemal has that torso thing going on uh so for the more artistically inclined and for the most uh, more um uh people who like to be a bit loud right who one when you when people look at your cupboard or wardrobe to go hey what is that then yeah this one perfectly fits the bill but for the more office product people i say usually executives you know they go for that office types and all that this more um sober design and uh chic polished you know and uh, loving loving atomizer man more perfume as should have this chunky atomizer just love them okay uh, so those are the things that's going on for prada so prada to to be simple guys um i think jpg lamal reflects a more innocent time where you know uh, the creativity was going a bit crazy and all kinds of notes were thrown in and you know we were going wild in those days in the 90s and what not whereas uh, prada is a more modern interpretation more restrained and more uh, how to say uh, more i would say in fact more versatile version of uh, lamal now why we are saying version of lamal and what not and the, the the argument of it being similar it boils down to the fact that both of them have a 
uh, lavender you see lavender as a content as a vanilla as a uh, component so this leads many people to sort of put them as uh, brethren okay siblings and what not so um, inevitably right there are only a certain number of uh, things that smell nice in this world x amount so inevitably after considering all the rules regulations longevity um and health factors and also we filter all that then you only get certain number of ingredients that they can package into a perfume inevitably some overlap will be there some perfumes are going to smell similar okay as long as it's not a uh, how to say a uh, rip off i think we can be um uh, fairly give them a chance right so uh what's my conclusion okay my conclusion is that um it's something like uh, somebody asking you want to have a ferrari in your house or you want to get a mpv or you want to get an executive salon right uh, honestly if you have the means you might want to have all of them because each of them are like meant for a different purpose okay now this is for me volatile spicy and all that and uh, this is more for evening date that kind of a setup okay whereas uh, this uh, spot it's a bit more toned down so you can escape this in more semi casual uh, setup and all that and um, you can use it for all kind of functions so it's called spot uh, doesn't mean you have to go play tennis or uh, american football wearing this you know uh, or the gym for that matter um, but if it floats your boat fine go ahead but it's just a, like a versatile pre- perfume you can just uh, spray on and go go anywhere you want and well, this leans more towards uh, you know going to like a smoky environment like clubs and cigarette smoke all that kind of thing then this will sort of Uh, work well and even for smokers you know sometimes you got that you want to sort of uh, blend uh, you don't want to be smelling too much of tobacco then this can sort of um, you know work with the tobacco and then make you smell like kind of kind of cool i guess you know if you want to use the word right that's what it's about so in this battle who wins i guess depends on who you are if you are a more sedate work oriented person then you should go for the prada sport whereas if you are a party animal if you are a artist you are a, you know you always you know you are the on the spotlight then go by all means for jpg lamar toso and all man okay guys thanks for listening uh, taking up your time to you know uh, listen and uh, please do share your comments and thoughts because that's what social media is all about right otherwise i'll just be rambling to the wall and be happy and go to bed right so hope you all enjoyed this discussion and uh, that's it for me this time see you guys soon from senhaun take care much love bye bye stay safe